my content calendar for quarter two, 2022. I was just about to do this. Like I, it's on my to-do list to update my Asana content calendar this week. I always try to do it right before the next quarter starts or the next month starts. So as I was preparing to update Asana, I thought, oh my gosh, why don't I share this, you know, here today? Because I think it would be really helpful for you to see what it's like as like the blank slate of my content calendar and then what it looks like whenever it's totally finished. I'm not going to go like step by step and do everything here in this video today, but I'm going to show you the big picture of what I'm trying to accomplish whenever I pull up my Asana and I do all the updates and the pieces of it that are most important to have. So let me pull up my Asana. Let me share this. If y'all have any questions about this, put them in the chat while I'm going through it. Okay. So this is Asana and this is my project management tool. If you've never seen any of my YouTube videos that I've done about this, you can go check them out after this training here today because it's what I live and die by. I love Asana so, so much. I've been using it for almost three years at this point. And it's what I look at every day when I sit down on my computer, I say, what do I have to do today? And this specifically is my content calendar. I'm going to just collapse this side. So it's not as like all over the place and you, we can really just focus on here. But, um, I, I'm finishing up the month of March because when I'm recording this, it's the end of quarter one. And I, these are the only things that I have to do for the rest of this month, which ends this week. So what I would do if I wanted to see everything that I've done in the month of March is you could come and go to all tasks be prepared. There's going to be a lot of information. So these are all the pieces of content that I've published in the month of March. And you can see it has all of these dates on here. The assignee is myself because I'm the one that's working on all the content for my business. I could also sort it by due date, okay? Like this is from March 1st and beyond. It just goes in chronological order of when everything was published. I had to set this up. So this is not something, let me go full screen here for a second. If you want to have a content calendar that works really well and reminding you, hey, this is when this is due, your email newsletter or your post for social media, your podcast, your YouTube video, all of the things, then you have to set up the system to where it will work out and tell you this is when this is due. This is like who's going to do it. This is the category that it's in. So there is some legwork up front to make this happen. Oh my gosh, y'all, it is it is a game changer. If you struggle with time management or project management, this is a game changer because I felt really stressed out not having a handle on when content was due, what I really needed to work on. Or if I happen to have a cancellation in my calendar and all of a sudden I had an hour free in a week where I thought I'm just going to be packed to the max. I'm not going to have time for this. I didn't realize, oh, this is how you're able to batch content. Because when you have that hour free in the week, I could go to my content calendar and say, oh, okay, well, you know, I have two podcast episodes that I need to do for next week or the following week. Why don't I just go ahead and record them right now when I have this hour free and then I'm ahead. People ask me all the time, how do you get ahead in your content? How do you make sure that you're on track? How can I do things ahead of time and batch and have area in my calendar to repurpose? This is how I do it. It's because I have all of this information ready to go. And I update it on a regular basis. And before a new month starts, especially before a new quarter starts, I go to my calendar and say, am I on track? Have I done all the things that I need to do? And how can I set myself up for the next quarter? So that's all my like precursors, my disclaimers for why I do this, because I know there's gonna be a lot of people that are saying, it looks like a lot of work. 
that looks like a pain in the butt. I don't know that I really want to do that. It is work until you get it figured out and have a system that works for you. Again, I've been using this for three years at this point. I know how to the ins and outs of how this works. I know some of the shortcuts. I know how to do things in bulk. But whenever I first got started, it was just a game changer to be able to open up an app that said, today, all you need to do is A, B, and C. Don't worry about D, E, F, and G. We just need to do A, B, and C today. That is what is due today. So if that's what you're looking for, highly, highly recommend Asana. So you can go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Asana to try it out. It's actually, I'm an affiliate. I'm a partner with them. And I just, I, I love it so much. I'm just going to keep talking about it. So I will shut up and get to what we're actually talking about today. Because as you can see, I'm looking like this. It's a blank slate. It is a blank slate for the month of April. I don't have all of my due dates in here. I don't have the assignees, which is myself. And I could just go in and do a bulk update and assign all these things to me. But what I wanted to show you is I did this for the whole year. I did this in January. It was the end of December, early January. I went in. It was a lot of just copy and pasting. I spent about an hour. And I did this for every single month of the year. I know you're like Crystal, holy crap. That that's a lot. Like you did this. Yes, I did. Look, we're in September. You can keep going. October, November, December. I did it for the whole year. And then once like you see January is done, I archive it at the very bottom. So I still have this information here. I just don't need it. So I will collapse these. There's February and then March will live at the bottom when we're done. That way, if I need to go back and reference, because this is where I do it. I plan my content in here. This is where I plan it. My YouTube videos, my podcast episodes, I will plan them in the sauna. So if I need to go back and reference something, I can do that here. Plus, this is all searchable. You can see the little search box up here. I could look up something and see, well, when did I create that? When did I talk about that? And like, I could just search for it here, which makes it a lot easier. All right, now let's go back up here to April. And I'm going to show you if I were doing this right now, which like I said, I'm not going to do this right now. But if I were to update all these right now, I would go in. Here's a weekly email one. For example, if you were to do this for yourself, you would say you would look at the April calendar and say, OK, I want to send one email a week to my list. When do I want to send those? I want to send them every Friday. That just so happens to be when I send out my emails to my email list. If you're not on my email list, you can go to crystalprofit.com and go all the way to the bottom of the page and you can subscribe to our email list and get weekly updates, all the things that I, I have here. Like you can see, I send one out every Friday and I share updates, tips, strategies, things that I don't often share in other places. A lot of stories. There's a lot of stories in my emails that I don't have time to share all over the place. And I will sometimes save those, especially for my email list. So get on there if you're not on there yet. But if I knew I wanted to share these every Friday, I could come into the due date column. And let me see, let me get into April. So April 1st, and then now it jumped up. Do you see that? It did that because it's sorted by due date. I could do this alphabetically and it wouldn't change every time I did it. But I am just going to go through and do all of the weekly emails need to happen every Friday. This is just going to get in the way. Let me move this one down. Whoops. Grab it. Move it down. Oh, it won't do that because it's not sorted the right way. Let me sort them alphabetically and that will make it happier. And let me go back to just the incomplete tasks. Okay. Now, weekly emails. 1, 8, 15. And then we have the 22nd. And then we have the 29th. So now, whenever I look at my tasks, when I first open Asana, if it were a Friday, it would tell me, hey, you have a new email that needs to go out. And it would say exactly like, hey, this is when it's coming out. This is when you have to do it. 
And then the other thing I would do is assign these to myself. So I'm going to go, oops, I always do that in here. I always forget there are certain keys. <laughs> it isn't all, not all of the uh, quick keys work in Asana the way they do in regular windows. But if I highlight all these, all I did was hold down shift and highlight all these, then I can assign them all to myself. And then that lets me know, hey, this is when these tasks will actually populate and go into my queue that says, hey, this is what you have to do this week or in the next few days. Now, um, I could keep doing this. I could sort these by tags and just do all of the ones that are for the podcast or all the ones that are for the Facebook group. But I just sit there and I spend, again, it could take me 20, 30 minutes to do this. But then once I do it for the month, it's done. It's done. I don't have to go back and do it every single day or it, I just, it's done. So I just expect to spend about 30 minutes or so at the beginning of each month updating this. And it's one of the reasons why I don't do the entire year. This is a really important point. I don't do the entire year and fill in all the due dates and all the assignees because what if I were to hire someone on my team or what if the dates need to change and I'm not going to publish this specific content at that time? I want to have that flexibility, but I at least have the shell. And that's really what's most important. You want to have the shell of what you're doing with your content calendar laid out. That way, whenever you do go in to make changes, manipulate dates, or change who something is assigned to, then you have that information like manipulatable. Did I just make up a word? I don't think that's a word, but you know, it's good. It's good. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? So I hope that this was helpful. I wanted to do this quick training on Asana and just let you know that it's, again, my favorite place to plan my content, but it's also something that I use every single day. And I have the app here. I have the app on my phone. I have the app on my iPad. Like I can use this anywhere. So if I do have like what we were talking about earlier, a spark of inspiration, and then all of a sudden a topic comes to mind and I'm like, oh my gosh, here's like three or four ideas on that. I can go into a specific podcast episode and add those notes in there. That way, when I go to record, I already know this is exactly what I want to talk about. These are the tips that I want to share. These are the stories that I have. And everything is consolidated in one concise place. But that's all I have about Asana. I just wanted to show that because I thought it would be super, super helpful. Mm -hmm.